What if Jed McKenna wasn't enlightened or Anthony DeMello or any guru that you kind of look up to and you follow and you think that they've got a, a taste of something higher and you, you feel like, okay, I'm going to follow that teaching. What if they're not actually what they say that they are? Does that remove the value from their teachings? That's what I want to explore on today's episode of The Living Philosophy. Just before we jump in, if you're enjoying these videos, it'd be really great if you could hit the like button below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. All this really helps things to keep growing. So yeah, without further delay, let's let's jump right in. I was having this debate with a friend the other day about Jed McKenna. And we were kind of, Jed McKenna is this this great spiritual author. I, I love his stuff. It's, it's almost anti-spirituality. It's very... It's, it's gold. It's a gold mine. We're talking about whether it matters if Jed McKenna is enlightened or not. And I was very much of the opinion that it, it does matter. Whereas my friend was like, eh, I don't know about that. And this kind of takes me back to the days of, of studying metaphilosophy, which is the philosophy of philosophy. And the, the questions of whether a philosopher's biography matters to the value of their philosophizing. And I was always of the opinion that it does, because the, the philosopher is the first advocate, the first mirror, the first greatest reflection of their own philosophy. And so if they don't live up to that, if they don't, I don't mind if they don't live up to the, to the high ideals, but if they're not aspiring towards that, if they're not speaking from a genuine place, then I lose a lot of respect for it. And so with Jed McKenna, because it's a pseudonym, we don't know who Jed McKenna is. And so there's a degree of, well, do we trust this guy? Do we, he's, he's saying stuff that's, that's different from a lot of spiritual teachers out there. And if he's making this distinction between enlightenment and mysticism, if he's making these really important spiritual distinctions, and he's not talking from a place of experience, then for me, that makes a big fucking difference. My friend was saying, well, if it's just a part, part of his personality, if it's like a sub-personality, if it's like the enlightened aspect of himself, and that this is like something he's channeling, like getting into a kind of a channeling a muse in that sense, but I I, I just, I don't feel like that has, uh, that has the value. Because the thing, as he emphasizes so often, is that the thing that matters is the numbers, how many people are getting enlightened from following this method, and and he's so disparaging of other other communities and other things for, for not having that many numbers. And so if he's not an enlightened person and doesn't know enlightened people and he's talking about this stuff, then there's a hypocrisy there that completely undermines it. So for me, it's, it's a really, especially in Jed McKenna's case, it's a really clear cut thing of like, if the real guy isn't enlightened, then what the fuck is he doing? And it would really, it would really annoy me because it would just be another spiritual person misleading all the people. For reading a lot of different spiritual books, his is, you know, he's, he's tapping into some very good shit there. And he's, he's seeing things from a, a for me, a higher perspective. But maybe that's just because I, I identify with it. I feel a bit of affiliation with that view. But even still, if, if it's not, if he's, if he's misleading, then, I, I don't have a lot of a lot of pity for it. Of course, there's no way to, to really find out because it's just there's people on the hunt for Jed McKenna apparently, but he's a very hard man to find. <laughs> Doesn't want to be found. And yeah, I guess this kind of uh, concern for me goes back to I read a, a a great spiritual book called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, and the 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 guru in that one was a guy called Socrates. And there was this note at the start of the book that this is a semi-fictional book. So some parts of it are, are true, some parts of it aren't true, and where you draw that line depends on the individual, and that is just a load of bullshit for me. Help you with something? What the hell did you just do? There's a lot you'd have to know before you could understand what you saw. Mine is just a reflex organ. Reacts to everything. Talks with that ranch. Because there's stuff in that, there's extrasensory powers, there's this amazing guru, this really cool guy, and while again, I think there's there's a lot of wisdom in it, because they're bringing in this paranormal stuff, this uh, extrasensory kind of stuff, it, it really grates with me, because someone who's more naive spiritually, someone who believes in, in much more things. Because the thing with spirituality is, once you step off from the mainstream, once you step on the plank of spirituality, you've moved away from the safety of mainstream views, and so you've entered into this reality where you're told that not everything is true, nothing is really as it seems, don't believe the truth. 
And so you don't really know what to believe when you're out there. And so you, you, you grab onto gurus like they're fucking life rafts because you want to know the truth. And this person sounds like they've got it and they've got all this, they exude this confidence. So you follow that person. But then what if you find that that person's just, you know, they're talking out their arse? Then that's, that's a major problem as far as I can see. And in the way of the peaceful warrior, the problem that I see there is that people have entered the spiritual realm. They don't know what to believe anymore. It's hard. The, the measures for truth, it takes a while to establish when you're getting used to spiritual stuff and even then there's always a little bit of doubt you know the autobiography of a yogi has a lot of things where you're like i mean is this true is this like if, if, if it is this is amazing we need to change everything but if it's not if it's just a if it's just a fictionalized thing and these things are like embellishments then you're going to get some people who are quite naive and they're going to believe a lot of this stuff and they will lap up anything that that author has to give out and it just becomes like a beautiful marketing piece and it becomes like uh, people believing stuff that is outrageous outlandish that's the kind of spiritual stuff that really grates on me it's just the the, the potential there for taking advantage of people people's open-mindedness at a, at a sort of vulnerable time intellectually because becoming spiritual like the the newly spiritual it's a very vulnerable time because you don't know what to believe you're re-evaluating your belief systems and so someone like that can come along and be like here won't you believe in this stuff look at this cool stuff follow me follow me and it's just leaving a, a trail of breadcrumbs with promises of amazing powers and experiences and so i think that it's really important for a spiritual teacher to have their have their ducks in order and i really i'm, I'm quite harsh I'm quite critical of them if, if they don't and I'm quite shrewd about the whole spiritual thing because I see that there's a lot of bullshit out there and so I, I probably believe a lot less than maybe even when people say that books are truthful I'm like is it though? There's a lot of things and I think the, the attitude to have I've, I've developed an attitude of like playfulness where I've got things that I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure are true that I'm like whoa that's that's like I've got a strong weight of belief behind that because I've seen things up close and personal and there's something going on there and then there's things that I'm like oh this is interesting and I'll play around with them so when I get new personality systems when I first encountered Spiral Dynamics when I first encountered Myers-Briggs I'll, I'll, I'll not just take the, the book's word for it I'll start thinking about it I'll start applying it to my world and if I see that it matches my experience I will then begin to give it a little more weight and a little more weight and it moves from over here which is like no real value no real weight in it and it moves towards the, 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 the greater weight of the okay maybe this is a thing so if I saw a monk meditating and levitating in front of me, I'd be like, okay, that's uh, that's probably true. But if I read it in a book, if I see it in a video, yeah, I wouldn't be too inclined towards believing it. So yeah, I guess it's it's the thing of like, only trust your own experience. And this is, again, another message that Jed McKenna has is like, just destroy all this shit, you know? Burn it. Because the only thing that matters is your own experience, is your own truth. Everything else is just baggage. Everything else is just boxes in your attic that you're collecting and you're not really sorting through so burn all the stuff in your mind that isn't yours uh, if you want to head on that path so yeah that's just something that i wanted to share today is whether the question of uh, a guru uh, an enlightened person a spiritual teacher whether the question of them being enlightened is really relevant and i believe that it, it, it is massively relevant and so yeah that's just what i wanted to share if you've enjoyed the video please give us a like down below subscribe if you haven't already and otherwise i shall see you next time Thank you for watching.